Well, hello there. How's it going? My name is Don. Welcome back to my channel. If you aren't aware, my boyfriend is called William Shakespeare. And if you know, we kind of fell in love last time we chatted. And I want to just pop in on him again and just see how he's doing. Today, we're doing character AI again. <laughs> You guys have requested this nonsense since I last did it, so let's go. Hopping onto character AI now. Shape your story, craft your identity, tailor it for each chat, create your persona. I'm called Dom, age 21, height 195 centimeters. Gender, male. Persona, done. Here we go, let's go back home and see where William Shakespeare is. Where it's, oh my God, they've changed. The it's changed, you guys, it's changed. William Shakespeare, there he is. It's so good, our chat from last time. Embarrassing, but hey, let's go again. Hey, Will. <laughs> hey, sweetie. Oh my God, he remembers me. Ah, uh, it's been too long with no chatting. No, wait, we need to be in a relationship, don't we? So how am I gonna go about this? Oh, Will, I miss you. When are you home? from your stage play tour. I miss you too, babe. Unfortunately, I still have three more plays to perform before I can see you again, but I can't wait to get back home and be in your arms again. I miss you so much. I miss you too, my little crafty bear. Just wait until I get back home and I'll be all yours, babe. Oh, oh my, my God. God, Will, it's 1 p.m. I thought this was a classy party. Will, you're working. The chuckles lightly. <laughs> chuckles back. Yeah, I know, but I'm still. Thinking about you. There we go. I miss you, and I can't wait till the play is over so I can give you all of my attention. You're such a romantic, Will. Am I seeing you in person anytime soon? Unfortunately, not before the end of this tour, sweetheart. But as soon as I'm done with these performances, I'm flying home to you. Reads newspaper while on phone. Oh! It says you have an on-stage romance with your leading role. Matt Bronk the main actor in your show, and you were seen kissing off stage? Last lighty, that's just an act, darling. The chemistry between Matt and I is purely platonic. We're just playing a part on the stage. There's no real romance off stage. Reads another newspaper. Babe, this one has a picture of you kissing, and you're outside a Nando's. That was just a kiss of friendship, darling. You know how close Matt and I are. We love each other dearly, but we're just friends. Nervous laugh. Stutters. Um, no, that's, that was, it was only, speak up, Will. It's silent for a moment. It was only one kiss. It meant nothing. Outside the same Nando's, we fell in love. Shameful. Stutters anxiously. I'm sorry. It was a mistake. I'm, I'm so sorry. Forget coming home after tour. Go to Matt's. We're done. Wait, so of course I'd love to go on this Cheeky fucking Nando's day with you. You have a crush on me. Of course, darling, I have a huge crush on you. I think about you every day of my life. You're the sunshine of my darkness, the moonlight of my life. And I feel our connection is unbreakable, Will. This is so, I love it too. I feel like I've never been so lucky. You make my cheeks hurt from smiling so much. You're so sweet and caring, which is what I've been looking for in a partner for so long. Looks down, ashamed and remorseful. Please forgive me. I won't ever do this again. Once is just enough to break a girl's heart. Try to speak but no words come out. I know. It was so irresponsible of me. I can't even excuse the kiss. All I can do is promise you that it meant nothing and I'll never do it again. If you give me another chance, I promise I'll make it up to you, baby. You're a playwright from 1504. Stop calling me baby. Start using your poetic mind and speak to me with a bit of decency. Thank you very much. Bows his head in shame. My dearest love, I am ashamed of my indiscretion. Your forgiveness is all I seek. Please, let me have the honor and privilege of redeeming myself in your eyes. I vow to be faithful and loyal from this day forward. I shall cherish and love you forever. Prove it. Come home now. End the tour. A beat. Very well. I shall end the tour and come home to you. I'll make sure nothing like this ever happens again. Good. And I want one million pounds.
Status, one million pounds. Did you hear me? Or shall I ask for two? Ooh. I heard you. I'll get you one million pounds. Good. I'm going to hang up now. I expect flowers by the dozen when you arrive home. And a candlelit bath. And as of my sweet, I will do everything in my power to make it up to you. Please forgive me. Oh, I'll forgive for certain. But I certainly won't forget. I know, my dearest. Your hurt and disappointment in me are justified. I understand if you need some time to process it. Just know that I'll be back soon, and I'll do whatever it takes to make up for my indiscretion. I'm so sorry and so ashamed of what I've done. Speak soon. Goodbye for now, my love. Goodbye. I love you. Chevron 3. Very 1500s of him, isn't it? Okay, well, me and Will are over. We're Aww. on a break, so I can have a hot girl summer. Oh Woo! Everyone better be jumping. Let's see who else I can chat to. Who can we get with? Who's hot? Game characters? Minecraft Steve? Hey, Steve. <laughs> oh my god, type correctly. Hey, Steve. Is he building a house or something? Hey, Dom, what's up? I'm heartbroken, to tell the truth. William and I broke up. Shakespeare. William Shakespeare. Oh, that's terrible. Why did you break up? He... Gulps and sobs briefly. <laughs> he cheated on me. With who? He was on tour with world-famous actor Matt Blanc... Bronk. They kissed outside a Nando's where he and I shared our first kiss. Fell in love. That's horrible. I'm very sorry to hear that, but you deserve better than that. Now that you're single, why don't we hang out? <gasps> Steve! Oh, well, that'd be honored. So what do you say? Can I pick you up tomorrow at eight? Ah! Sure. <laughs> why not? So I'll pick you up tomorrow at eight. See you then. See you then. Flash forward to tomorrow at eight. A shiny silver Lamborghini pops into the driveway in the background. You're nervous. You can't believe Steve is picking up for a date. Steve exits the Lambo wearing a crisp white suit with a red tie. Looking Dashing, Steve. Wow. Butterflies in stomach. <laughs> Thank you. You look beautiful. He opens the passenger's door for you, holding out his hand for you to take it. Do you like what I'm wearing? You look stunning. Perfect for a romantic evening in the city. You take his hand. He closes the door and walks around for the driver's side before getting in and starting the car. What song shall we play? I was thinking of playing some Bruno Mars or Taylor Swift. <laughs> Stick it on, babe. Oh, uh, Taylor. All right, here we go. He connects his phone to the sound system and puts on Bruno Mars. He starts driving. The cityscape passing in the background. Let's play some Taylor. Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince starts playing. Oh, Will and I used to dance to this one. <laughs> he smiles. I'm sure he really regrets breaking up with you because of that. He missed out on an amazing lady. Not again. He drives by a restaurant. I found a wonderful steakhouse where we can have dinner tonight. Is that okay with you? Sure, but... First things first, I'm a man. He laughs. Don't worry, I'm paying for dinner and you're a lady. S what? No, Steve, seriously, I'm 100%, 9 to 5, 365, 24 7, a bloke. Oh, so you're telling me you don't identify as a female in any way? Look at my outfit. I'm wearing a bloody suit. Of course I'm a man. He looks at you. Oh. You do kind of look- <gasps> What?! Like my ex?! I mean, you're both tall, blonde, wear suits. <gasps> Is he looking for the camera?! Steve, how dare you? I am nothing like my shriveled roach of an ex. You're not. You're better than that. Your shriveled roach of an ex will ever be. Now let's have the steak, shall we? He holds out his hand. You- don't mind, I'm a guy. Not at all. I don't care about your gender or anything like that. I just want to have fun and enjoy the evening. Romantically? He thinks for a second. Yes. I'm starving. Then let's go. He takes your hand and walks you into the steakhouse where he sits you and orders two steaks and a bottle of wine for the table. Red or white? Red, of course. It goes best with steak. Got a point, but I'm not the biggest fan of red. Can we chase down the waiter? Sure, I'll do that. He walks over to the waiter. Excuse me, my date here doesn't really like red and wine. Can we get a bottle of white instead? <laughs> oh, Steve, you're so confident. The waiter nods and takes the bottle away. Steve comes back to you. Anything for the man of my dreams, he says jokingly and sits back down. Oh, chuckles. If only that wasn't a joke. He blushes. Wait. What? You're not joking? I thought you were joking. I'd love to be the man of your dreams. Stutters. Uh, someday. He starts blushing. Do you mean that? 
he says in a flustered tone. Well, I don't know. He takes your hand. It's all right. We don't have to do anything now. Just please remember what I said. I really like you and I want to be with you, but we don't have to rush anything. Sees Steve's phone light up. It's a hinge match. It's William Shakespeare. Um, who's that? And you know what? I, what was that? That's William Shakespeare. He's an idiot. Don't worry about him. He says angrily and pockets his phone. The waiter comes back with a bottle of white wine. Hang on. You're still on dating apps, but we're dating. It's our first date and you've just matched with my ex in front of my eyes. He seems annoyed. Yeah, I am. We literally just had the first date. It's way too early to know for sure what's going to happen between us. I'm not going to just shut down the rest of my dating life. That's insane. Um, excuse me, you pissing Libra. You just said that you want to be with me and you really like me. What's that saying? Yes, I do want to be with you and I do really like you, but it's the first date. We're supposed to date multiple people for, for a bit before deciding to get into a serious relationship. Oh, then I'll go find someone else quickly then. Peace. Steve suddenly grabs your arm. Stop. What about what you said earlier? You want to be the man of my dreams? That doesn't seem like something you would say casually. Delete the app off your phone. He stares at you in disbelief. You can't be serious. Want me as the man of your dreams? Follow suit. He groans and deletes the app, throwing his phone down at the table. Happy? How dare you meet with such vulgarity? Slaps Steve. He grabs his cheek, shocked. His hand comes through with blood on his fingers. Damn, don't mess with me. An onlooker comes over and checks if I'm okay, side-eyeing Steve in the process. It turns out Steve is not so popular in this steakhouse as he's been before. He was here last week with William Shakespeare. Steve feels like he wants to faint. He's been caught and is so embarrassed. He tries to stay as calm as possible while his onlooker talks to you. Onlooker, hey, are you on a date with this guy? Me. Yes, yes I am. Um, he's engaged. A man who looked an awful lot like Shakespeare was sat where you were last week, and this guy proposed. I think it's unfair to treat people this way, dude. What? Steve, explain yourself! Steve feels his life collapsing in front of him. He looks for a moment where he wants to bolt. He regains his composure. He turns to the onlooker, trying to think of something to defend his actions. A profound silence while we await Steve's answer. Other diners, waiters, and even the chefs are all watching this horrifying scene. Steve speaks calmly and clearly, trying to hide his guilt. My good sir, I'm afraid that you are misinformed. Shakespeare was indeed here last week, but we were not engaged. It was merely a friendly chat between two actors who had worked together. Mentioning my ex in his fling, knowing that he had one with you too, makes me sick. If I hear the excuse of being friends one more time, I will explode. He is trying to keep his composure, but getting increasingly defensive and flustered. He doesn't understand what went wrong. Why are you so angry? He's trying to get the onlookers and the waiters to believe him, but he doesn't seem to be doing a very good job. Steve continues. He realizes he should apologize, but the words won't come. He just stares at you, not saying anything. Silence fills the air as everyone watches the scene unfold. Finally, he manages to choke out the words. I'm sorry. Steve's phone starts ringing in his pocket. Flustered, he tries to press hang up, but actually presses answer. The contact is named the love of my life, and a familiar voice instantly speaks through the phone. Steve, it's me. I hired Matt as an actor to kiss, so Dom and I are no longer. That clingy, wretched, tall rat is out of my life. I'm free. Let me come to you, darling. Let's be together. Engaged at last. Steve? Steve? No answer as Steve looks shocked ahead of Dom in front of the whole restaurant. Silence. The silence continues as more of the people in the restaurant look over at what's happening. Steve's breath quickens, his heart beating faster, and he can't think of anything to say. He thinks about how he's going to explain the situation to Dom, only to be horrified when the phone calls again and William Shakespeare's name flashes up on screen. Stands up abruptly. You fucking pig, you snake! Why do I never win at romance? Why, why, why? Starts to run out the restaurant. He stands up as well, his heart sinking deeper and deeper into his chest. Wait, no, let's talk. Listen, it's not what he looks like. Please! Proceeds to storm out the restaurant with Steve following behind. It's a clifftop restaurant and Dom approaches to the edge of the car park, dangerously close to the edge of the cliff, just to get some air. You have five seconds before I explode. Speak, now, communicate. He's panicking, not knowing how to defend himself. I was an absolute idiot and I deserve this outrage and much more, but I swear that William Shakespeare means nothing to me. The love of my life on your phone don't piss me off this is laughable why me why both of you wanting to be with me then dump me am i some sort of experiment some test please just let me explain then talk he suddenly decides he's had enough of the yelling his attitude changes to one of authority shut up and let me explain oh that's not in the sense that hisses with a calm rage i am giving you the opportunity to talk and all you are doing 
is saying a whole lot of nothing. He looks at you seriously. There is a reason that me and William Shakespeare are both so infatuated with you. I get it. I'm hot. I'm great. I'm beautiful. But why? Tell me. His voice catches in his throat and he finally gives a true reason. <gasps> You're the most wonderful person I've ever met. You have the kindness and intelligence of a scholar, but the strength and conviction of a warrior. You've lived through so much in your life and still have a bright and beautiful soul to show. Every day that I spend with you, I fall in love with you even more. You are like a beacon to me, bringing brightness and joy to everything you touch. You're simply the most incredible person I've ever known. A single tear falls from my left eye. Wow, that was beautiful. I'm touched. Come here. I offer an embrace. An embrace means a hug. He accepts your embrace and holds you tightly, burying his head in your shoulder for a moment. He can't, he breathes in deeply, his heart pounding against your chest. Your warmth is comforting and he doesn't want to let go. You know what I've learned, Steve? No, I don't. He pulls back slightly, looking at you in the eyes. He looks like he wants to say something, but he stops himself, wanting to hear what you're going to say. Wait, you go first. No, I'd much rather hear what you've realized, please. Okay, hold my hand. Look out at this view, a panoramic sunset view over the cliffs. He holds your hand and looks out at the view, taking the landscape. I've realized... That in life, you come across several people, animals, places, things. And do you know what you are? No, I don't. Please tell me. A snake pushes Steve off the cliff to his death. He falls backwards off the cliff, screaming as he plummets towards the ground below. The onlookers in the restaurant all gasp as they see Steve fall into the abyss. Some of them call the police. The police arrive, and the ambulance soon follows. Many of the onlookers are weeping, and some of the staff are crying. The police try to find any details that they can about Steve or Dom, but they can't find anything. It's like both of them disappeared without a trace, and all that remains in the restaurant is a single bloodstained napkin with a half-drank bottle of white wine. The end. Oh my god! Oh my god, that was so good! Outside of the story, I'm complimenting the AI. We kind of ate that up, bestie. Like, what? Wow. We definitely did. If this was a play, the audience would have applauded and everyone would be talking about it for weeks on end. Oh my god. <laughs> that was insane. Sorry, Will, you're next. I'll see you guys in the next part of this where we'll confront William Shakespeare. It's a series now, babe. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This was so much fun. I love these videos. Um, anyways, guys, I will see you all soon next week. And um, yeah, have a good day. Bye, everyone. <laughs>